Good morning. Let's begin this service singing hymn number 349. Thy will, Almighty Father, thine and thine alone be ever done. For thou art life and truth and love, the great eternal Holy One. Hymn 349. The scriptural selection this morning is from 1 Samuel. I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. When Saul returned from following the Philistines, he was told, David is in the wilderness of En Gedi. Then Saul took 3,000 chosen men out of all Israel and went to look for David and his men in the direction of the rocks of the wild goats. He came to the sheepfolds beside the road where there was a cave, and Saul went in to relieve himself. Now David and his men were sitting in the innermost parts of the cave. The men of David said to him, Here is the day which the Lord said to you, I will give your enemy into your hands, and you shall do to him as it seems good to you. Then David went and stealthily cut off a corner of Saul's cloak. Afterward, David was stricken to the heart because he had cut off a corner of Saul's cloak. He said to his men, The Lord forbid that I should do this thing to my Lord, the Lord's anointed, to raise my hand against him, for he is the Lord's anointed. So David scolded his men severely and did not permit them to attack Saul. Then Saul got up and left the cave and went on his way. Afterwards, David also rose up and went out of the cave and called after Saul, My lord, the king. When Saul looked behind him, David bowed with his face to the ground and did obeisance. David said to Saul, Why do you listen to the words of those who say, David seeks to do you harm? This very day your eyes have seen how the Lord gave you into my hand in the cave, and some urged me to kill you. But I spared you. I said, I will not raise my hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. See, my father, see the corner of your cloak in my hand. For by the fact that I cut off the corner of your cloak and did not kill you, you may know for certain that there is no wrong nor treason in my hands. I have not sinned against you, though you are hunting me to take my life. May the Lord judge between me and you. May the Lord avenge me on you, but my hand shall not be against you. As the ancient proverb says, out of the wicked comes forth wickedness, 
but my hand shall not be against you. Against whom has the king of Israel come out? Whom do you pursue? A dead dog? A single flea? May the Lord therefore be judge and give sentence between me and you. May he see to it and plead my cause and vindicate me against you. When David had finished speaking these words to Saul, Saul said, Is this your voice, my son David? Saul lifted up his voice and wept. He said to David, You are more righteous than I, for you have repaid me good, whereas I have repaid you evil. Today you have, no, you have explained how you have dealt well with me, and that you did not kill me when the Lord put me into your hands. For who has ever found an enemy and sent the enemy away safely? So may the Lord reward you with good for what you have done to me this day. Please join in a few moments of silent prayer and then pray together the Lord's Prayer with its spiritual interpretation given in the Christian Science textbook. Our Father, which art in heaven. Our Father, Mother, God, all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name. Adorable one. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know as in heaven, so on earth. God is omnipotent, supreme. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. For God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love, over all and all. Please join in singing hymn number 266. Our God is love, and all his sons his image bear, we know. The heart with love to God inspired, with love to man, will glow. Hymn 266.
The members of this church extend a loving welcome to those who are visiting us this morning. This church is a branch of the Mother Church, the first church of Christ scientist in Boston, Massachusetts. A church designed, in the words of its founder, Mary Baker Eddy, to commemorate the word and works of our master, which should reinstate primitive Christianity and its lost element of healing. If you are visiting us today and would like more information about Christian science, please ask the usher for assistance. If you're joining us by Zoom or viewing us on YouTube, send us an email or give us a phone call. We'll be glad to help. The email address and phone number are both found on our website and, on, and in the Zoom link email. If you would like complimentary copies of the Bible and Science and Health, just let us know. We'll be happy to accommodate you. A Sunday school for children and teenagers is available every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. Students are taught the scriptures and the healing truths of Christian science and their use in daily life. Child care is also available in our children's room. In our reading room, the Bible, as well as the writings of Mary Baker Eddy and other Christian slanted literature, may be studied, borrowed, or purchased. The reading room is officially open after each Sunday service and before each Wednesday evening meeting, but we're happy to open the reading room for you by appointment anytime you wish. Should you wish to express your gratitude for Christian science by becoming a member of the Mother Church or of this branch church, Please ask the usher to get you in touch with our clerk for more information. And please know that you need not be a resident of South Florida to be a member of our church. We welcome students of Christian science from anywhere. Thank you for being here today, whether in person or joining us on Zoom. Each of you is a valued part of our congregation. This being the first Sunday of the month, I shall read from the manual of the Mother Church by Mary, by Mary Baker Eddy, Article 8, Section 1, A Rule for Motives and Acts. Neither animosity nor mere personal attachment should impel the motives or acts of the members of the Mother Church. In science, divine love alone governs man, and a Christian scientist reflects the sweet amenities of love in rebuking sin in true brotherliness, charitableness, and forgiveness. The members of this church should daily watch and pray to be delivered from all evil, from prophesying, judging, condemning, counseling, influencing, or being influenced erroneously. The words of the hymn this morning are a poem by our beloved leader, Mary Baker Eddy.
that greetings glorious from my head whence joy so Friends, the Bible and the Christian Science textbook are our only preachers. We shall now read scriptural texts and their correlative passages from our denominational textbook. These comprise our sermon. The canonical writings, together with the word of our textbook, corroborating and explain the Bible text in their spiritual import and application to all ages, past, present, and future, constitute a sermon undivorced from truth uncontaminated and unfettered by human hypotheses and divinely authorized. The lesson for today begins at page 24 of the Christian Science Quarterly. Subject, love. The golden text is from Zephaniah. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. Responsive reading is from Isaiah and Jeremiah. Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people, saith your God. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm, and carry them in his bosom, and shall gently lead those that are with young. For thus saith the Lord, sing with gladness for Jacob, and shout among the chief of nations, publish ye 
praise ye and say, O Lord, save thy people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the coast of the earth, and with them the blind and the lame, the woman with child, and her that travaileth with child together. A great company shall return thither. Therefore they shall come and sing in the height of Zion, and shall flow together to the goodness of the Lord, for wheat and for wine and for oil and for the young of the flock and of the herd. And their soul shall be as a watered garden, and they shall not sorrow any more at all. I will turn their mourning into joy, and will comfort them, and make them rejoice from their sorrow. I am the Lord, which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. The following citations comprise our sermon. From the Bible, Isaiah. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. Since thou wast precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Bring my sons from far, and my daughters from the ends of the earth, even everyone that is called by my name. For I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Psalms. Lord my God, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty who covers thyself with light as with a garment. O Lord, how manifold are thy works! My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. I will sing unto the Lord, because he hath dealt bountifully with me. Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. First John. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. We love him because he first loved us. As was announced in the explanatory note, I will now read Corel to passages from the Christian Science textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. God is love. More than this we cannot ask. Higher we cannot look. Farther we cannot go. The starting point of divine science is that God, Spirit, is all in all, and that there is no other might nor mind. That God is love, and therefore he is divine principle. To grasp the reality and order of being in its science, you must begin by reckoning God as the divine principle of all that really is. Spirit, life, truth, love combine as one and are the scriptural names for God. Everything in God's universe expresses him. God is individual, incorporeal. He is divine principle, love the universal cause, the only creator, and there is no other self-existence. The substance, life, intelligence, truth, and love, which constitute deity, are reflected by his creation. And when we subordinate the false testimony of the corporeal senses to the facts of science, we shall see this true likeness and reflection everywhere. Love redolent with unselfishness bathes all in beauty and light. 
Let there be light is the perpetual demand of truth and love, changing chaos into order and discord into the music of the spheres. Psalms. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He sent from above, he took me, he drew me out of many waters. He brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. Be merciful unto me, O God, be merciful unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. My heart is fixed, O God, my heart is fixed. I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people, I will sing unto thee among the nations. Romans Let love be without dissimulation. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love, in honor preferring one another. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Ruth. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. <clears throat> and Amilelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left and her two sons. And they took them wives of the women of Moab. The name of the one was Orpah, and the name of the other, Ruth. And they dwelt there about ten years. And Malan and Kilian died also, both of them. And Naomi said unto her two daughters-in-law, Go, return each to her mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you, as ye have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant you that ye may find rest, each of you, in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voice and wept. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee, for whither thou goest, I will go, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. First Peter See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. Love one another. 1 John, 3rd chapter, verse 23, is the most simple and profound counsel of the inspired writer. The rich in spirit help the poor in one grand brotherhood, all having the same principle or father. And blessed is that man who seeth his brother's need and supplieth it, seeking his own in another's good. Love giveth to the least spiritual idea might, immortality, and goodness, which shine through all as the blossom shines through the bud. All the varied expressions of God reflect health, holiness, immortality, infinite life, truth, and love. The beautiful in character is also the good, welding indissolubly the links of affection. 
to ascertain our progress, we must learn where our affections are placed and whom we acknowledge and obey as God. If divine love is becoming nearer, dearer, and more real to us, matter is then submitting to spirit. The objects we pursue and the spirit we manifest reveal our standpoint and show what we are winning. Self-forgetfulness, purity, and affection are constant prayers. Practice, not profession. Understanding, not belief. Gain the ear and right hand of omnipotence, and they assuredly call down infinite blessings. Harmony in man is as beautiful as in music, and discord is unnatural, unreal. Science inevitably lifts one's being higher in the scale of harmony and happiness. Psalms. Sing unto the Lord a new song, and his praise in the congregation of saints. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. I will praise thee with my whole heart. Deuteronomy. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. And he will love thee and bless thee and multiply thee. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Psalms How excellent is thy loving kindness, O God! Therefore the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house, and thou shalt make them drink of the river of thy pleasures. For with thee is the fountain of life. In thy light shall we see light. Dost thou love the Lord thy God with all thy heart? and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind? This command includes much, even the surrender of all merely material sensation, affection, and worship. This is the El Dorado of Christianity. We should examine ourselves and learn what is the affection and purpose of the heart, for in this way only can we learn what we honestly are. The Hebrew bard, swayed by mortal thoughts, thus swept his lyre with saddening strains on human existence. As for man, his days are as grass. As a flower of the field, so he flourisheth, for the wind passeth over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. When hope rose higher in the human heart, he sang, As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness, I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. For with thee is the fountain of life. In thy light shall we see light. Not materially, but spiritually we know him as divine mind, as life, truth, and love. We shall obey and adore in proportion as we apprehend the divine nature and love him understandingly warring no more over the corporeality, but rejoicing in the affluence of our God. Religion will then be of the heart and not of the head. Mankind will no longer be tyrannical and prescriptive from lack of love, straining out gnats and swallowing camels. The vital part, the heart and soul of Christian science is love. Psalms, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. 
With my mouth shall I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive and plenteous in mercy unto all that call upon thee. Mark. And Jesus, when he came out, saw much people and was moved with compassion toward them because they were as sheep, not having a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. Luke, and it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, When you pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Matthew, then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times? Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto you until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him ten thousand talents. But forasmuch as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife and children, and all that he had, and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion, and loosed him, and forgave him the debt. Colossians Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Whatever inspires with wisdom, truth, or love, be it song, sermon, or, or science, blesses the human family with crumbs of comfort from Christ's table, feeding the hungry and giving living waters to the thirsty. Christ is the true idea, voicing good, the divine message from God to men speaking to the human consciousness. Our master taught his disciples one brief prayer, which we named after him the Lord's Prayer. Our master said, After this manner, therefore, pray ye. And then he gave that prayer, which covers all human needs. Jesus' prayer, forgive us our debts, specified also the terms of forgiveness. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and love is reflected in love. And we solemnly promise to watch and pray for that mind to be in us which was also in Christ Jesus, 
to do unto others as we would have them do unto us, and to be merciful, just, and pure. Isaiah, the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it, the excellency of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, Be strong, fear not. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. First John in this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the savior of the world. We love him because he first loved us. Matthew, and behold, two blind men sitting by the wayside when they heard that Jesus passed by, cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. And the multitude rebuked them, because they should hold their peace. But they cried the more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. And Jesus stood still and called them and said, What will ye that I shall do unto you? They say unto him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. So Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes, and immediately their eyes received sight, and they followed him. Christianity, as Jesus taught it, was not a creed, nor a system of ceremonies, nor a special gift from a ritualistic Jehovah but it was the demonstration of divine love, casting out error and healing the sick, not merely in the name of Christ or truth, but in demonstration of truth, as must be the case in the cycles of divine light. First in the list of Christian duties, he taught his followers the healing power of truth and love. A musician demonstrates the beauty of the music he teaches in order to show the learner the way by practice as well as precept. Our master taught no mere theory, doctrine, or belief. It was the divine principle of all real being which he taught and practiced. His proof of Christianity was no form or system of religion and worship, but Christian science working out the harmony of life and love. Hold these points strongly in view. Keep in mind the verity of being that man is the image and likeness of God in whom all being is painless and permanent. Remember that man's perfection is real and unimpeachable, whereas imperfection is blameworthy, unreal, and is not brought about by divine love. If the scientist reaches his patient through divine love, the healing work will be accomplished at one visit, and the disease will vanish into its native nothingness, like dew before the morning sunshine. A louder song, sweeter than has ever before reached high heaven, 
now rises clearer and nearer to the great heart of Christ. For the accuser is not there, and love sends forth her primal and everlasting strain. My weary hope tries to realize that happy day when man shall recognize the science of Christ and love his neighbor as himself, when he shall realize God's omnipotence and the healing power of the divine love in what it has done and is doing for mankind. The promises will be fulfilled. Psalms. The Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime, and in the night his song shall be with me, and my prayer unto the God of my life. For I shall yet praise him, who is the health of my countenance and my God. Isaiah, then shall thy light break forth in the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily. And thou shalt be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water, whose waters fail not. In divine science, where prayers are mental, all may avail themselves of God as a very present help in trouble. Love is impartial and universal in its adaptation and bestowals. It is the open fount which cries, Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. Our last hymn this morning is number 245. 
O tender, loving shepherd, we long to follow thee, to follow where thou leadest, though rough the path may be. Though dark and heavy shadows enshroud the way with gloom, we know that love will guide us and safely lead us home. M245. read the scientific statement of being from the Christian Science textbook. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation, for God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material, he is spiritual. And it's correlative scripture from 1 John. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, but nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us 
from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Thank you.